morning. Today is the 14th day of the 15 days trip. So it's also a special day. I got a new look today for a special day because it's the 20th of January, which is my birthday. So it's gonna be awesome. Um, we're going to uh, Nissan HQ first, which I I mean the review that I saw it says that there are many there are many cool cars. Mm, then we'll be going to Omori Omori factory at Yokohama. Then we'll be back to the city for uh, my birthday celebration. So a very special car there. Um what is it? It's a uh, mini oh Fiat yeah Fiat but it looks very white. Let me show you. See what fat is it? So fat. So the people in the car, huh? so they're not better not get near to it to film. And then give you some view of the neighborhood here at the uh, Edogawa. Uh, which is where I overnight at uh, East Blue Kasai Hostel it's a train station here which can be a bit noisy over here but uh, totally I mean the sound totally did, never reached my hostel and this is where I get my needs daily needs food especially over here it's 350 meter walk okay I <coughs> I had my breakfast uh, but I'm wondering should I go to Omori factory first or Nissan HQ first because Omori factory is definitely more awesome than uh, Nissan factory or uh, Nissan HQ uh, uh, let me take a look at the map and see which is better okay I'm going to uh, Nissan HQ first because uh, even though it's further but it takes only 1 hour and 10 minutes to Nissan HQ instead of uh, 1 hour and 30 minutes to uh, Omori factory so that's really weird let's go taking train in Japan is very very frustrating it's so complicated so from what stations is now from Otemochi to uh, Okama just now Google says this platform, platform 1. Other passengers say yes, platform 1. And then according to time, it's 10-19. Uh, then I asked the station officer, he said, no, not this one, it's the next one. Like, what? So confusing. What? So I wasted some time there, trying to figure it out. And finally, I just, I just take the plunge and uh, trust Google. And it was right. Thank you, Google. Okay, I think I have found it already. Look at this beautiful river. It just sets beside a river. <coughs> Pretty similar to the McLaren showroom in working, isn't it? It's by the lake. This one is by the river. Let's go. Nice sheet here. And it looks like there's a mini four wheel drive competition by Tamiya today. Oh, there's also RC. Cool. Edward is a lucky guy today because they did display some classic car here. Guess what they did? One, two, three. It's the Nissan R33, four doors, and uh, I think 300 ZX. Okay, so this is the Fairly Z convertible. Wow. Hex Z32. Hey, convertible. I think it's freaking rare, right? If Malaysia, yeah, 300 ZX. If Malaysia has one, yeah, maybe I'm gonna get one. It's either very cheap or very expensive. Because for about 40k, you can get a 350Z convertible as well. And uh, R33 GTR 4 door. 
what? Are you serious? A four-door GTR? But there's a GT plate at the side. And then a GTR emblem. What is this? Altec version. So this is probably the Nissan Leaf technology they are showcasing and that looks like the battery pack I've seen at the factory a few days ago Yeah, exactly the one Same configuration I wonder where the wheels are So that's the engine Very interesting Can you see the electric motor? It's just so small versus a combustion engine so I prefer electric engine I mean the downside, I would call it downside of the battery This is the way it is But electric motor makes things very simple Basically you need an ECU uh, or ESC, electronic speed controller And down there, very tiny motor And you don't, I mean you just need a few gears as in You just need one gear basically Just one speed reduction Instead of a uh, few, uh, like six gears, six different type of uh, gear reduction because the electric motor achieve uh, maximum torque at the first RPM, one RPM. That's why Tesla is so fast because it's instant torque, it's instant instead of building up, instead of that, instead of uh, building up uh, torque and horsepower like you did with uh, internal combustion engines so I'm happy to see this that uh, there are more and more EV cars being put out there a very nice 370Z with a stripe that resemble resemblant or represent or some mimic uh, the design of uh, like a bumblebee in a Mustang oh no sorry Camaro and here some RC event is going on really good to see this and uh, main majority of them are kids kids to play wow this is cute good Gary of uh, Tamiya RC product what is this? Is it like one? Yeah, I should be one day four scale model. It's actually it's very good sharp line. Very very nice. It looks just like it looks just like uh, die cast. Nice uh, Have to stop playing RC for now. Focus on business, making money. Let's take a look. Wow, we made all the gears. Cool. Carbon fiber shaft, carbon fiber propeller, I think you call that. The engine is quite big, really. Man, there's so much of uh, it's such a high center of gravity with that engine. I don't know why they're not able to make it even lower. And then look at how the drive shaft tilts, actually, tilt up, it surprises me. That as well. The uh, guy explaining. Okay, if we just look below the the intake manifold, actually engine is okay, quite low. Look at that. If you look at the cylinder head. Mm, that's I think is uh, reasonable. It's also below the suspension line uh, on the upper wishbone. The lower which won't look very special as well. So very interesting. You get to see uh, how actual GTR frame or drivetrain looks like without a shell. So we have a twin turbo here on both sides, one on the left, one on the right, and uh, we pump uh, fresh air to the many uh, to the intercooler and then back to the engine on the other side side of its own so pretty interesting concept because previously majority of the 
Finn Jobber out there uses the same big intercooler, whereas this one uses two intercooler that looks like the same size. But probably each side has a different size turbo. Yeah, on the right is a smaller turbo, on the left is a bigger turbo. Or maybe not, I'm not really sure. They do look like the same because the intercooler also look the same. Also very cool that they actually apply a clear coat of paint onto the surface. I wonder why are they oven in the competition area? I'm gonna cook some art. And here you go. Latest GTR looks pretty good. Kind of luxury design and sportiness as well. There's the other one, I think that's the limited edition uh, for 50th anniversary of one second. Yeah, probably the same unit display at uh, Auto Salon that I had a chance to sit in. It's like some. How to say, how to describe this paint is like what made. It's not. It's like midnight purple, but it's, there's also a different shade of like brown. I think I call it. What do you. What do you call this paint really? I forgot it. It's like chameleon, I think it's chameleon purple. Beautiful tail light. An icon. Uh, when you can own one for fun, although I don't like it. But it's quite an iconic uh, Godzilla on the road. So I get to try my favorite car, the R34 GTR. GT3, I think, just now. It's a very slow car. Mm, so I just ended it early. And then let's take a look. At they also gave me this. Nice. So that's the new release from Tamiya. It's freaking tempting. It's such a cool looking six wheeler. Ah, looks like the tire is uh, quite soft as well. Wish I could just stick it out and then have a look. Flip it. Drive it. Uh, so people are getting ready with their cars, there's also lady driver, all using the Japanese car. This is a good thing, right? Because it's uh, cost should be a lot cheaper than those touring out there. It's a uh, R390, 34 exact tune. Oh, jealous, MV. Hey, everyone is lining up their cars for group photo, I believe. Let's go to the other side and have a look. So instead of the typical touring, which is very high speed and costly, these are, I believe, uh, what's the category called? I can't remember. I think it was started by Yokomo, using 55 turn motor, much lower cost competition. And uh, so everyone gets to enjoy it. And then, as you can see, there are so many kids here. So it's a good thing. Low speed enough, low cost enough that everyone can play. I believe these are all the TT01 or TT02 chassis. Low cost, everyone can play. This is the Nissan Leaf, latest, latest generation. Interior looks just like the conventional vehicle, conventional internal combustion vehicle. So it's not intimidating. And uh, I've driven one before, the first generation, it was super comfy. And uh, not just me, but every, a lot of people say that it feels like a Rolls Royce, but something that is attainable and uh, it's an EV it's so comfortable and quiet because you know there's no combustion engine a lot less vibration as well no cylinders, no bangers banging up and down so in Japan it's uh, 3 million that's translate to I think $100,000 $100,000 ringgit or 30 thousand US dollar? I'm not sure. Mm, not a good cal calculator in my brain. Mm, range of 400 km. 120 watt hour battery? That's quite a lot. Option parts, body color to shoot from. That's very nice. What's the bib? Wow, so many color choices, but I believe it's most likely it's only for the Japan domestic market. Oh, nice grey. Completely new look. 
I think I prefer the previous one. This looks too normal. Because the previous generation looks really like something from the future. So that's all for Nissan HQ. I gotta make a move uh, to Omori factory. But before that, I'll head to the toilet and also uh, some souvenir shop here. Wow, very nice, but pretty expensive model. Nice kitchen here. Expensive little model cars. I think it's a rebrand from Kusho. Holy cow, look at this. Very nice polo t shirt of uh, BNR32. Do we have BNR34? Ah, look at this. So cute. All the classic cars. Oh, this is the one, the expensive. For like, this is for like uh, 60, 70 US dollars. Oh, some very cool goodies here. Keychains. I found what my friend wants. So, unfortunately, when you see merchandise, especially it's Nissan and it's new, <laughs> you have to get some. Uh, I spent like 13,000 yen already. Oh my god. Ay, Japan, Japan.